New day, new adventure. But first, it's time to watch this guy beg for love. <laughs> Which is relatable, to be honest. That's what the girl's about to say. Even the crow's like, what is going on? This always works. It always works. You want a girl to love you? Just get down on your knees and cry and beg. Never fails. <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> oh, he has a little sparrow. It's cute. Can't talk, though. How does it give assignments? It just says choo-choo-choo. How am I supposed to decipher that message? I feel like the show's done a great job so far establishing sort of the stakes for Tanjiro and his mega kawaii <laughs> demon sister. But I have really been looking forward to other people joining the crew. So it's exciting to see this guy show up. After seeing him the first time in the test arc, I feel like that could really, really breathe a lot of life into the show. Not only from the exploration of new characters with different personalities, but also allowing Tanjiro to sort of reflect his own personality through, through dialogue. So I'm very excited to see what blonde kid has to offer. And he's <laughs> made a great impression on me already. Episode 11. This font, though. Suzumi Mansion. I heard you the first time. Choo choo choo. Take a hint. <laughs> you do? You, under you understood that? That is amazing. <laughs> I remember. It wasn't much of a meeting, though. We were just sort of around, overwhelmed by the death and destruction we had just witnessed. But who could forget the sparrow, though? His hands messed up. And that's when Tanjiro found his girlfriend. <laughs> Imagine. This guy could take some lessons from Sokka about aloofness. Do they even know each other? No, they don't. <laughs> All Tanjiro's fault, 100%. He ruined what could have been a beautiful thing. I like this guy's energy. <laughs> and he, he's honest? Self-honesty? Oh no. Oh no. Debt. Uh, relatable backstory. Check. Everyone always has to have this grand backstory. Avenging my family, returning my sister back from her demon form, reuniting the world and its four elements in total harmony. I have never experienced any of those things. You know what I have experienced? Debt and loneliness. <laughs> those are not fun, especially the loneliness part. Tanjiro has an obligation to help this guy get married, but we got to learn a little bit about aloofness along the way and maybe not being so grabby. <laughs> I mean, for real though, they're all under a lot of pressure. Like, they do live on the edge of death every day. It's a bit much, but I get it. Not everyone is so steel, steely-willed as Tanjiro. I see we speak the language of the birds. That's wonderful. <laughs> Total silence. This guy's very, like, feet on the ground, you know? Love, food, money. I get it. And that's when they became best friends for life. <laughs> He's like a little kid. <laughs> People like this, they're gonna get very upset and emotional, but they'll rebound quickly. There's like a childhood innocence or purity to it. <laughs> that was so nice, like, thanking someone for giving him back his own food. The gratitude. Nothing taken for granted in this world. So... <laughs> He's so fixated on the sparrow, animal lover confirmed. How did you- okay. I only heard him say it was chew. Yeah. This kid will, will make up for a, a lot of this sort of emotional explosiveness if he can handle himself in an actual fight, do what he has to do. It really depends, like, a lot of times people will complain and make excuses as a way of rationalizing why they don't have a responsibility in the situation, but I feel like there is a kind of person who complains as just an outward way of dealing with anxiety. They can't sort of process it internally, so they put it all out there, but that actually ends up being a tool for them that helps them take the actions they need to take anyway. I feel like I have this quality in myself. Like I'm always thinking about worst case scenarios. I'm always thinking about little areas where I'm failing and I've gotten a lot better about making that an internal process and not sort of forcing other people to bear that burden. But in the grand scheme of things, I feel like it gives me some comfort to have identified the things that worry me because at the very least, it's an acknowledgement of the fact that I'm feeling anxiety or fearfulness. And when it goes really well, it informs action. Like if this is something that's continuing 
continuously bothering me, what are the paths I can take to address it? And at the end of the day, I do my best to show up for the things that I want, even if it is terrifying. So for me, it will all depend on what he actually does in the moment. Oh, we got another sense. Nose and ears. Maybe Boar Man will be eyes. Is demon children? They got the eyes. This monster's got a nice house. What does he do for a living? Tanjiro could just skip the whole, like, My Hero Academia smile training. He's already there. <laughs> he would make a great hero in My Hero Academia. I'm really afraid. Because the show has set a precedent for sounds being terrible. I'm sure he's alright. <laughs> oh my god. Tantra, no. <laughs> well, that's an element of the My Hero Academia training he failed. The brother ripped to shreds by demons, thrown out of a two-story window, landing on his neck in an explosion of, of blood. Tanjiro's take. You good, bro? Which wound? <laughs> he hugs him. That mid card, though, is so depressing. This one's more fun. Thank you for that. Oh, so there's still time. That's a huge relief. This guy no longer matters. Do it. Make me proud. <laughs> disappointed. We're all disappointed in you. There you go. Yeah, it's gotta be his own decision. And he gives him a responsibility to take care of them. It's a pretty good move. Keeps him focused on something else. <laughs> Admittedly, like, well, this is not typically what you see from heroes in a show like this. It's a perfectly reasonable reaction. Oh, yeah, there's no resting time at all. We're making a lot of noise. This demon house. Oh no, we gave you responsibility. You're supposed to be watching the box. I'm disappointed in you, children. And you just became a liability. What is happening? What the? What kind of illusion is this? It's like the gym in Saffron City. At the end of it, you get to fight Sabrina. He has a lot more patience than I do for this. <laughs> is he blind or something? Does he use, like, echolocation with that drum? Well, we know who he's gonna find first, if that's the case. Even the kid is embarrassing him. I was about to say, maybe being in the older role would give him a feeling of responsibility, but... Nope. He's dead. I mean, it's not a terrible idea to get this kid out of the house. Whoops. It's a maze where the only way out is forward. Oh? I know you. From the intro. 
Very fitting that there would be like a, a Minotaur-like thing in this maze. Are we gonna get two new crew members in the same episode? That would be amazing. All right, let's take a stab at the, the maze thing, the house thing. This is probably all gonna sound very general, but when it comes to unresolved issues of the heart or things that are causing problems, the more you run away from it or deny it, the deeper it sort of becomes. Because in avoiding dealing with those things directly and facing the pain of looking them head on, the more one is forced to build structures that enable one to live around that, almost as if it's a protection of those things. A physical analogy would be like, if you have a leg injury, if it goes untreated, the rest of your body sustains damage because you start to walk in a way that compensates for that injured part. And that unnatural way of moving causes stress on the body. The same is true for things of emotional nature. The more we ingrain those things, the longer they're allowed to persist sort of unexamined, the deeper yet more destabilized the structures surrounding it become to the point where it's pervasive to a lot of other things in our personalities. And perhaps the only way to deal with that at the root is to go deeper into it, like with the labyrinth. There's a desire to run away from those things, but it sort of follows you everywhere you go. You sort of end up in the same place. I think it's only by doing the really difficult and painful work of looking at that darkness and where it comes from, and I guess in a way accepting it is something of value obtained in the situation. And I feel like that actually works pretty well with, crap, I forgot his name, Blonde Kid, who like clearly is not navigating this well. But if he were to go into it and actually face the demon, there's a lot for him to gain. <laughs> Well, he didn't get very far, if it makes you feel any better. So much for the element of surprise. I guess you gotta give him a chance. New term unlocked. Don't celebrate yet. He changes the room with sound. The Inception. Very specific skill. <laughs> he promised that he delivered. He came charging through. A man of his word. I love his swords. Is it a mask or is it his face? He's a demon slayer. He's my dude is ripped. <laughs> Damn, makes an impression. Like him already. He's going whole hog. Very exciting to get these two characters. We need a squad. I've been waiting for this since I saw the intro <laughs> the first time. You know they're coming. It's just a matter of when. Here they are. With uh, with personality. They both got personalities. The suddenly makes so much sense. <laughs> Tanjiro just chilling. The emotional anchor. Dun, 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 dun. Give us some backstory. Oh, we got a, a friend joining us. He's got heart, give him that. Girl is fighting for her life. No lies were told. Zenitsu sleeps, that doesn't sound promising for that. For this next battle, yeah, I can already tell these two are going to add a lot to the dynamic of this crew. As riveting as the dialogue between Tanjiro and Nezuko has been this far, I'm excited to have some personality on the squad. They both sort of burst into the story as these bundles of energy, but just very different manifestations of what that looks like. Zenitsu, I can tell, has a lot of passion. He doesn't have the strong, calm demeanor or conscientiousness that Tanjiro has, but it seems like the guy feels the moment, if you know what I mean. He definitely wears his heart on his sleeve, which can be terrible in the wrong moments because there's a lack of self-control in there, but can be really beautiful when it comes to expression and capturing the emotions or sweetness of moments, and also in terms of being genuine. I really like people who wear everything on the outside, even if there are elements that I don't gel with well, at least you know who they are and you know that they're not deceitful, which honestly I think is one of the most important things to me in terms of forming relationships. I feel like he's the kind of guy that love him or hate him, you at least know who he is. And then Hogman came in with a very, very different sort of energy, almost stealing the protagonist spotlight a little bit, just ready to go. I felt that energy. This guy fights. It'll be really cool to see what his personality is like outside of battle. <laughs> <laughs> 